Am I still tool crib over there? No. Huh? No. no? Okay. I'm missing some people here. Is this it? Okay. Where is this Jerry? Hey. Oh. Is that My favorite demonstration right here. My favorite demo. Okay, the next thing we're going to be doing here is soldering. Okay? Now, it's similar to what you've been doing with brazen. The difference here is the amount of heat that you're going to use. Okay? You know, it's kind of like with that project right there, we were, we were brazing, we were actually pounding heat into it. We were bringing that stuff up to a dull cherry red and forcing it to get up to 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. That way it was hot enough to melt the brazing rod to it. Here, okay, what we're gonna be using is two different heat sources. If you use propane, like this right here, it burns at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. The job takes a little bit longer, but you have a little better control over the heat if you've never done this before, okay? So you may wanna try that one first. The other heat source we're gonna use is MAP gas. MAP gas is an acronym for a big long name. Okay, if you want to pronounce it, it's on the label right there. Okay, I can't do it, so I call it map gas, like everybody else does. This stuff burns at 700 degrees. Okay, job's going to go a little bit faster, but you got to have better heat control with this. Okay, now the biggest problem y'all are going to have is initially you're going to get this copper too hot because you're going to base it off what you know from brazing. It's not like that at all. Okay, now remember with brazing, we would heat the male end up first, right? and then move the torch down to the female end right there. With soldering, it's a little bit different, okay? You're gonna put some heat on the joint initially, okay, no matter whether you use propane or MAP. A little bit of heat on the uh, joint just to liquefy the flux that we're gonna use right here, okay? Once it comes up to temperature a little bit and starts to liquefy, that's when we start laying our soldering uh, stick on it right here. Now, this type of solder right here is a little different than a brazen rod. It's very flexible and soft, okay? It's made actually out of a a uh, all alloy called uh, antimony, tin and antimony, and they call it 95.5 uh, is what it's known as, and that talks about the percentage of tin to antimony, okay? This replaces the old lead type solder that people used to use. That stuff is just too damn dangerous. Lead is bad news, so they don't use it anymore. In fact, it's illegal. This is what you use now. It's better anyway. It melts faster, makes a stronger joint, and you don't have the environmental hazards that you do with the old lead stuff. Problem with this is, okay, doesn't have any flux in it the way the brazen rod did that you were using before. So you must use flux with this. If you don't, it's not going to stick. Now, you remember the other night I did the demo for you for silver brazing, right? We had a blue label. Yeah. Okay, this is the red label I was telling you about. This is only for low temperature uh, soldering applications, seven, four to 700 degrees. Okay, it has an entirely different composition to it. It kind of looks like a light brown Vaseline looking type stuff like this right here. Okay, if you remember the other one looked like a white school glue, right? right. This one here looks like a light brown Vaseline consistency, okay? Do not leave it uncapped. If you do, it's gonna dry out. If you leave it like that, stuff starts to dry out pretty quick, okay? So make sure you recap it after you put this stuff on here, okay? You gotta make sure that you use some of that, otherwise this stuff will never stick, okay? All right, so. First thing we do here is get a piece of copper. Now you'll be using hard drawn copper for your project next week, kind of like this. Okay. Today you're going to be practicing on that soft drawn that we used last uh, last project. Uh, it doesn't matter what type of uh, copper you use as far as practice goes. The the bottom line is though, before you try to solder it, you got to make sure that you get it really clean. If it's not clean, I don't care what you do, it's never going to uh, go together for you. Okay. So take some sand cloth. <coughs> Get it really clean, and once you get it clean, do not touch it with your fingers. Skin oil is about the worst thing you can get on there for soldering, especially. Okay, when it looks like a new penny like that right there, we're good to go. Now I'm going to use a pre-manufactured elbow just to make this a little bit easier for me for the demo. Okay, but what you're going to do is take some copper and just swedge it tonight. Okay, and make a joint like this so that you can have something to put that piece into, like I'm about to do here. Okay. 
Alright. Once you get it clean, take your flux, put some of that on there. Okay, fit it in there. Give it a good half twist to kind of seat it in there. Okay. Recap that. Alright. Now we've got two types of torch tips here. Okay. This one's called a Burzomatic. When you get out there in the field on your own, this is what you want to buy for yourself right here. Okay. You screw it onto the top of this thing, and there's a switch on here. It says on, off. That opens and closes the valve. Turn it to on. Okay. Push this button. The gas starts flowing and there's a little uh, spark igniter in there. It will light it for you. You don't need any igniter with this one, okay? Once the flame is burning, you push that button down and it maintains it without you having to hold this in right here, okay? Like this. If I let go of that, it's gonna go out, okay? So, strike it, hold it, there you go, all right? When you wanna cut it off, push the red button, it'll cut it off for you right there, okay? Now, if you're out here brazing and stuff like this, or soldering rather, okay, you turn this thing on, don't leave that thing there like that. You go, yep, I think that's pretty good, okay? Because you're burning up my gas, okay? And that's kind of hazardous to do that stuff, so make sure you turn it off, okay? All right, that's that type of tip. <clears throat> now this one here, okay, which is what we have more of than those, because these are cheaper. This is the old uh, open up the valve manually type. Now don't open it completely all the way, open it all the way and then kind of back it off slightly, okay? With this one here, you have to use a striker, okay? There you go, okay? Now, propane, map gas, both of them, their natural state is liquid, okay? So what you don't want to do is turn these bottles upside down and try to use it, because if you do, you're going to get liquid and it's going to start spurting out of there in, in droplets, okay? It'll also clog the nozzle up, so don't use them upside down. Right side up, sideways, okay, just don't turn them upside down, okay? In cold weather, these things can be a little touchy at first until they start getting warm and, and uh, they start drawing for you. So don't get too frustrated if it keeps going out on you. Now, we got some tips here this morning we had a few problems with. They're kind of dirty, so they need to be cleaned out a little bit. So once you get that flame going, let it heat up a little bit and kind of burn off some of that carbon, okay? It'll, it'll be all right after that. Strike them with this striker right here, okay? All right, any questions on how to light either one of these? Okay. I used the propane this morning, so today I'm going to go ahead and use MAP this time, okay? <clears throat> All right, so we got our copper prepared. Now, I want you to think of this, this solder stick here, and what you want to do is take a piece off of the roll, about this long, okay? Make that a little bit longer, about like this. Just heat it up. Okay, there you go. All right. And then just use it like that. It's a lot easier trying to hold this roll and do this. Okay, it's a little awkward. Okay, so we'll use this piece here that I prepared. You can use that one, somebody, when we get ready. And what I want you to think of this thing is like a pencil point. Okay? The problem here is with this stuff, as soon as it gets slightly warm or it touches anything warm, it's going to stain it. Okay? So whatever this touches, it's going to stain and leave this silver colored stain on it. You don't want that. All you want to get is the uh, solder right there on the joint. You want to build up kind of a beveled edge, okay? This is kind of tricky, I'm telling you right now, okay? So it takes a little practice. But if you get in there and you touch the side of it kind of like this while you're trying to get in there, it's going to stain the side of that copper right there. You don't want that. It's smearing on there, okay? So it takes a steady hand here. And you got to kind of keep it right on the end right there. And it's very little heat. A little bit of heat. Once this stuff starts to heat up, it starts to get real silvery. It almost looks like mercury, okay? And it'll start to melt go on. Once it gets silvery like that, some of it goes on. Kind of pull it away. Let it cool down a little bit. Take the heat away a little bit. Let it cool down until it gets back to this cloudy, opaque color like this right here. That means it's kind of set up, okay? Now, if you leave it on there too long, Okay, or you get the copper pipe too hot, what's going to happen is all of this is going to liquefy, okay, but it's going to get sucked down inside the gap right there, and it's going to wind up inside the pipe like this right here. Here's an example from this morning what one guy did, okay? He uh, got a little too much solder going, too hot, and he filled the pipe up there, okay? <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but that kind of looks like a restriction, yeah? Think a there might bit. be a problem oh. right there? <laughs> 
he like completely clogged it with solder right there. So what you have to do is you have to walk the fine line between getting it warm enough to make it melt without getting it too hot to where it sucks it into the pipe, you understand? And that's really what you gotta get the feel of tonight. Once you get that down, soldering's a piece of cake, okay? It is. But you gotta get that touch, that feel, okay? And it definitely takes a little bit of practice. And I don't mind admitting to you, it's been 12 weeks since I did this, other than what I did this morning. And if you don't use this, you can definitely lose this. You know what I mean, you can get rusty. So whenever I do this demo, I mentally cross my fingers. You know what I mean? See how I do it. Okay. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> and actually, I hit it pretty good this morning. So let's see what happens here tonight. All right. If you got any questions while I'm doing this, let me know. But what I want you to watch is how I'm heating this up. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to put a little heat up here on the top of the copper <clears throat> just to heat this joint up, okay, and then we're going to kind of keep it up above the joint and off to the side a little bit. Don't point it directly at the copper. If you do, it's going to get too hot, okay? And what I want you to watch is how this solder starts to melt to this, okay? Here we go. A little bit of heat. See how that stuff liquefies? Okay, now you put that there kind of like a pencil point. Come back to that. You gotta let it set up a little bit like that. Okay. Get a little bit too much on there, like I got in a one spot trim that regularly. Don't rinse it out. It's okay. I got a little bit more there than I want on this, okay? So you take a wet rag, it's got to be wet. Put a little bit of heat on the surface of this stuff and let it melt. Just a little bit. kind of turns silvery yeah. just as it turns silvery it's getting real soft okay so as soon as it starts to do that just kind of back off a little bit and it'll set in there real pretty for you Now 
And while it's still warm, take a rag that's warm, or I mean wet, okay, and just kind of shoe shine it lightly. And it'll pull off some of that black stuff. It'll make that joint look nice and clean. Assuming, of course, you don't have a rag that's you know blacker than the ace of spades like some of these. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You see how that looks right there? Okay. Take a look. Nice. All right. Now, what we don't have is the smearing up on. The, where's that piece of pipe I had with the stuff inside of it? Anybody have that? Right there. Okay. Right there. Oh, yeah. Now, you see this right here in comparison, what this guy did here? Okay, he got too much solder up here and it started running all over the place. See this? Too much metal, too much heat. It takes very little heat. Did you see how little heat I was putting on that? And then just as it starts to liquefy, when it turns silvery light, you kind of just let it melt just a little bit and then back it off and let it cool down. And watch it. It'll go from silvery to kind of opaque color, like this color right here again. And that means it's set up. If you leave it on there while it's silvery, it's going to get sucked down inside the pipe and it's all going to be in there. It's not going to be out here. Do you understand? So it's kind of like you got to go in and out, in and out, and try not to point the flame directly at it too much. Kind of keep it off to the side a little bit and give you a little space there. Because if, if you get in too long, that copper is going to take that heat and retain it. And now the copper is so hot that this stuff here will liquefy and again, it will either run down the outside of the pipe or it'll get sucked down inside of it and you'll wind up with something like, like this right here, okay? Which is no good, all right? You kind of get the idea? Now, maybe that looks easy, but I'll tell you what, if you've never done this before, this takes patience and it is a little bit tricky. I'm here to tell you right now, okay? So your first few attempts, they're gonna look like crap probably, okay? Don't worry about it, everybody's does, let me tell you. Until you get that feel, like driving a stick shift car, oh yeah, that's how far you shove it in, okay? <laughs> it's kind of like that, man, okay? I don't know how else to describe it to you other than that. Now, a couple of things. Remember to use that wet rag trick, right? If you get a little bit going where you don't want it, make sure it's wet, okay? And just kind of lightly snatch it while it's kind of like in that silvery state, okay? And it'll come right off for you like it did here, okay? Try not to let this thing touch the side of the pipe because anything it touches when it's warm, it's going to leave a silver stain on and you won't be able to get that off you can sand it all day and it's still gonna be there, okay? So keep it like at an angle, like a pencil point like I was doing like that, and only touch where you want it to go, you understand? So if you've been out drinking all night, okay? Mm -hmm. This Monday morning, maybe this is not the job for you, trust me, okay? Now, I like to party and I wouldn't attempt this on a Monday, I gotta tell you the truth, all right? But you gonna be here Monday? Huh? Nobody gonna be here Monday. I'm not gonna be here Monday, are you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, from experience out, out in the Navy when I was, you know, out there uh, running crazy all the time, uh, Monday would not be a good day for me to do that. But anyway, you get the idea how that's supposed to look there, yeah? Yep. Okay? Anybody got any questions? Okay, soldering. Why would you not brace it, okay? Uh, there are different types of uh, applications. Anything that's uh, not under any real pressure, like a water line, drain line, condensate line, you would solder that. Because uh, soldering's a little bit cheaper to do than brazing is, so you'd be wasting money brazing. You could braze it, but most people are going to solder it. Water heaters, another example, okay? Um, so the thing about soldering, too, is a lot of times, like in a restaurant, if you get the all driven into a restaurant, and notice the copper lines behind the uh, refrigerators or the, the chill boxes, things like that. Those lines are right out there in plain view of everybody, okay? So if you're, you know, one of these guys that leaves a blob like this thing here with stuff smeared all over it like that, okay? Everybody what do you think the uh, owner's gonna think about that job right there, you know what I mean? Doesn't look too good, yeah? Right. This is your business card right here, and I'll tell you what, you want people to chase after you and offer your job, get good at soldering, because there aren't many people that can do it, I'll tell you right now. Seriously. Now, over there in the corner, over there by the table where we all cut the uh, copper the other day, you'll notice that there's some little uh, Z-shaped projects on there. That's what you're going to make next week. Okay. The project itself, to build it, is nothing. Okay? It's really about getting the heat control down and making nice, clean joints like this right here. Okay? That's what you need to be able to do. Okay? Because the construction of the project is nothing. Right? It's a piece of cake. Right? It's about technique and learning that heat control. So take a look at some of those back there. What I want you to notice on the one that has the ATI sign on it, the two pieces at the top, those were actually submitted to me by students for a grade. 
and take a look at them and see what you think about the top two up there. Those are definitely not wall of fame. Those are wall of shame, those two. In fact, the very top one up there that doesn't have a stem on it, the one with all the solder smeared all over it, that's how it was turned into me for a grade. When we tried to pressurize that, it, it was so bad it blew the stem out. Right there, oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, and, and when he brought it up, I looked at it, I said, you serious, dude? You actually want me to grade this? Really? You would leave this in a customer store and walk wow. away from it? Yeah, well, I don't really care. I said, great, I don't either. That's easy to grade. I'm done with that one. Next, okay? Don't waste my time, okay? You gotta be kidding me, dude. He's no longer here at school, by the way, he dropped out. So anyway, anybody have any questions? All right, one last thing. Now, we're gonna be operating torches here tonight along with these bottles, okay? Now, let's be careful. If you're operating one of the acetylene torches, uh, let's make sure that the bottles like these are one end of the table and the torches are at the other end, okay? And, you know, let's not blow each other up with these things, okay? Can we get tables for either or? Yeah, I would recommend that, yes. Okay, try to keep these away from each other. Also, when you get these bottles, they're going to have a little white cap on the end. Most of them do. Please make sure that white cap gets put back on at the end of the night so the gas doesn't start seeping out of these things, okay? That's uh, not a good thing, all right? That's about it. Anybody got any questions? Um, the propane, same thing what you just did? Same thing. It just takes a little bit longer. Try them both. You know, see which one you prefer. Some like propane over map. I, I did both. I did can the, you uh, use this tip on uh, propane? Yes, you can. Okay. Yep. They're interchangeable? Yep, they are. Right. Yep. Okay. Take them up at home for 20 bucks. Yeah, 